Hey everybody, my name is Casey. I'm one of the pastors at the Avenue Church, and thanks for joining our 10-minute recap. We are going to do our very best in 10 minutes or less to recap the message from this week. We just started a new series called What About? And we're taking a look at six questions that we believe deserve attention based on some research as to why people aren't like really uh, in church and part of that, part of that faith scene. Uh, it comes from the Barna Research Group. It really focuses mostly on millennials. And these were some of the reasons that are kind of keeping them from, from church and, and faith communities. And so we're going to try to address this week, what about God and culture? Next week, what about God and meaning? Week after, um, what about God and science? What about God and sex? What about God and doubt? And what about God and money? So we have our, uh, on our website, we'll have the, the full length message, but this is sort of the TED Talk version of that. So hopefully you can enjoy this and maybe share with somebody you think would benefit. Um, so if you're going to talk about culture, culture would be, um, we're, we're defining it as like um, the things relevant to a people group. So language, uh, music, food, um, movies, uh, all sorts of stuff like that um, kind of kind of help define a, um, a people group. And so well, where is God in that? Uh, one, of the, one of the findings from the Barna Group research said that, um, mo the, let's see, I've got the number here. It's like a quarter of millennials are feeling as though the church demonizes like everything in their culture. It's kind of like they've got a, everything they like, find near and dear to their hearts, whether it's like Fortnite or it's um, music or movies or whatever it might be. They're, they're just kind of like out. They feel like the church is kind of against that. And so I wanted to enter into that or maybe, or sometimes, you know, they, they could possibly feel like the church has nothing to do with that. And, and um, I want to challenge that a little bit and, and give, give some attention to that because I think God uh, most definitely has something to do with that. And so let's start off with the theology of culture. Like, what does God say about culture? We find this in Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3. Um, Genesis 1, we see that in the beginning God created all things, and then he also said that they were good. So we see that um, culture, as it pertains to God, begins in a really good way. Uh, we see in chapter 3 that culture gets broken. That's um, The Bible calls that sin. And basically, it's when we as humanity decided to find our... Our, our joy, our meaning of life outside of God. We believe that we can do better out, outside of God. And, um, and so when that happened, um, there was what, what is called like um, a brokenness, if you will, or a curse. Like um, all of culture, all of creation, um, it, it became broken. It wasn't completely destroyed, but when sin entered the world and, and humanity decided to separate itself from God, one of the results from that was a broken culture. And so you see how culture is abused and misused now. So what God intended for good, um, there we, we now see things like racism, human trafficking, um, addiction, all sorts of things that like uh, are, are part of the results of a fallen world. And well, so what's our response to that? Like, um, what, do we, what do we do about that? Uh, we find it in Genesis uh, this is, this is our, our anchor verse, if you will, Genesis 1, 27 and 28, and it says this, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and this is where God's going to give us a responsibility here. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And so in this passage, we see that there's um, what we call a cultural mandate. It's what God wants us to do with culture. And there's two main themes that pop out from this passage. And it's the theme of stewardship and the theme of creativity. God wants us to be stewards of creation. And God wants us to actually, um, because we're created in his image, uh, continue to bring new things to life from the things that he's, he's given us to work with. Helpful for me in studying for this was a, uh, an article by uh, Jerry Solomon where he addressed uh, God and culture. And so although not agreeing necessarily with everything in that article, it was really thought-provoking. And, and he was helpful in bringing these two things out in that particular uh, passage here. And so um, the, the emphasis now uh, turns into although we live in a broken and imperfect place where we are very familiar with the effects of sin and selfishness and greed and abuse of our cultural mandate, we still have a responsibility, opportunity, and joy to actually enter in um, to the culture, care for it, and see new things be brought to life. 
um, the, the scene in which this is originally set was in a garden. And so for Adam and Eve, they were to be stewards, they were to tend the garden, they were to get their hands dirty, um, they were to make sure that it had all, the garden had all of the necessary ingredients it needed to grow. And in so doing, from, from their work, from their participation in culture, uh, new things were, were able to come to life. I mean, it was a garden, so, so the understanding is that things were growing. Um, and it was from their stewardship. So you see how stewardship and creativity um, work together. And the idea here is flourishing, that the garden would be flourishing because God blessed Adam and Eve. He empowered them to care well for their surrounding and to see new things be brought to light, to see um, yeah, new things grow. And so uh, for us, the question is, how do we uh, flourish? How do we help the culture around us flourish. So it's not just how do we flourish individually, but how do we help the culture which God has sent us into to flourish. And it's the same call. It's to care well for that culture, and it's to see new things um, be brought to life. And so um, uh, Jesus, in the midst of the, the story of, of the scripture, he changes everything. So uh, what that means is that um, when Christ entered the world, uh, he brought the kingdom of God in a really special and unique way. And um, so the cultural mandate remains the same, but now because of Jesus, he's given us both the model with how to enter culture and also the means by the power of the Holy Spirit to enter culture. So um, when, when Christ came, he came with a, a message that said, the kingdom of God has come, repent and believe in me. And what he was gonna do is he was gonna die for the sins of the world, he was gonna overcome death, through his re resurrection, and then he was going to offer people like myself, who were far from God, the opportunity to be made right with God through faith in Christ's finished work. Because on the cross, he's punished for my sin and, and for yours. That not only uh, gives me the ability to be restored to God, but it also gives creation the ability to be restored to God. Because he promised one day that he was going to come back and renew all things. And until that time, the, the cultural mandate actually is being lived out in, in believers like you and, and me. It's, uh, if you're a believer and if not, um, we invite you into that. You see, the cultural mandate is still in play to care for creation and to see new things be brought to life. And, and now because of Jesus, God has given us the pattern by which to do that and also the power by which to do that. He's given us a new heart that now can care from a divine perspective and, and see these things that God cares about be brought to life in our current culture. And so there's a couple of ways to view like how Jesus um, goes into culture. Um, Richard Neighbor is, is in his work, Christ and Culture, gives us some of those. There's Christ against culture. Sometimes the church has thought that Christ should be against all things culture. And sometimes um, the second one is Christ of culture. And so you should take Jesus in the culture and let the culture define Jesus and just kind of like let go of all biblical perspective and kind of like let the culture at least have the last word, even if you're not letting go of all biblical perspective. There's a Christ above culture mindset that says, um, like, we're better than, so we're going to kind of show you the way. There's a Christ and culture mindset, which says Jesus walks over here, and culture's over here, and the two never really mix. And then there's the Christ, the transformer of culture. And this is what we see here in Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, you are the salt of the world. You're the light of the world. Um, I love how Tim Keller uh, puts, puts it, and he says, uh, basically, the way that, that we live this out is by being a faithful presence in the world that God has called you to be. And so um, that's, that's our encouragement to you through this message is that um, being able to, to see that we have a role and responsibility in the culture around us. And it's not to separate ourselves from it. It's not to be against it. It's not to be allow the culture to change us as the, into something that God hasn't called us to. It's not to be apathetic toward it. It's to actually really care well for um, the, the, the music, the people, the relationships, the industries, the organizations that you find yourself in right now. To steward those well and to believe that your faithful presence, because you're filled with God's spirit and God's love, will actually bring about um, new things. 
And uh, so that's an encouragement to you. Uh, we, we had kind of a, a walk away of like, hey, and learn how to enjoy our culture, learn how to enjoy it responsibly with discernment, learn how to engage in some of the places that other people aren't willing to engage, especially in the margins, and then also learn how to empty yourself for that good cause. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Faithful presence is the message. Um, love you, and we'll see you next week.